Hello everyone, it's good to see you back. A serious question, has anyone here used the Ergo Sum Exotic Swords yet? Like, actually properly built into them and giving them a try? If not, you are missing out on one of the most fun and chaotic experiences around. There are so many to try and get only a handful of the best to use, but we are going to be showcasing all of them today, no. Today, I'm going to show you an aggressive Ergo Sum build using none other the perfect fifth azotic trait and dawn core synergy. If you love going fast and playing destructive with swords, then here's a nice and easy way to go about it. So before we start, what ergo sum perk role would you like me to try out next? Be sure to comment below. Let's start with the general aim and then look at the build. Our aim is to make sure we are able to maximize both prismatic and ergo sum properties to the fullest, so both new and old players will be comfortable enough with giving it a try. For this, we will be using Dawn Chorus and Ergo Sum. A start with our exotic, Dawn Chorus, with his exotic effect, Rise of Ember. It states, Your Daybreak projectiles deal more damage and scorch targets on impact. Your scorch is improved and you gain a small amount of melee energy when you scorch damages a target. The exotic is perfect on pretty much any build that could produce scorch, which in our case only needs a weapon that has incandescent on it. Now, although our machine gun has incandescent, our ergo sum also has incandescent, a rear exotic trait, the perfect fifth, which if we're able to proc that effect constantly, we could do some pretty heavy attacks for near infinite scorch, ignite, and mini energy back. Our second exotic is the ergo sum with its exotic effect, the perfect fifth, which states, every five hits attach a delayed solar explosive, scorching your target. This exotic perk is a copy of the Polaris Lance effect on a sword, and this is quite honestly a perfect fit if you have the caster or vortex frame as you can proc its effect from just one heavy attack. Now there is more to the weapon that you need to be aware of, as the weapon does come with the transcendence dualist effect which basically speeds up our light and darkness transcendent phase, deals increased damage while transcendent, and defeating targets lengthens transcendence. Combine this effect with damage reduction while being transcendent and you should get an idea as to how the weapon properly will work. This will take some time to master if you're kind of new to this, and if you have the catalyst unlocked for it, I would highly recommend you use this for the build, as it's literally night and day with its effect. Of course, it's also not that needed, as shown. For aspect and fragments we have the following. A feed the void where defeating targets with any ability kills will activate devour. Helion, where casting your rift will produce a solar mortar, that lobs flaming projectiles at targets will scorch them. Fast or Grace, where defeating targets with kinetic weapons grants you bonus transcendence energy. Defeating targets with your super grants bonus transcendent energy for you and your allies. Fast or Protection, where while you're surrounded, you are more resistant to incoming attacks. Fast or Solitude, where landing rapid precision hits emit a 7 blast from the target. Fast or Balance, where rapidly defeating light targets grants melee energy. Rapidly defeating dark targets grants grenade energy. And Fast of Hope, where while you have an elemental buff, your class ability regenerates faster. So, for the place I will be going for, you must have Fast of Protection, Solitude, and Grace as the key fragments within the build. Reason being is that to use our sword effectively, we need to have as much damage reduction and health regen as possible, and also be able to use our sword while transcendent. A solitude will reduce enemy's damage output by quite a bit, while protection is going to make it better and easier for us to get up close and personal when dealing with enemies. Grace is of course going to allow us to quickly become transcendent, which is basically the keystone for the entirety of the build to work. Everything else is more or less going to improve our ability regen as we play. Also to note, having Song of Flame and Feed the Void is 100% a must for that extra build damage reduction we are getting. All of this together will make you feel comfortable enough to launch yourself headfirst into a group of enemies and come out on top, as long as you don't get sniped of course. For the mods and stats, we have both resilience and discipline mods as our top priority, with strength also playing a part. Resilience, we have ours at tier 10 for our 30% damage reduction. No key mods are needed for this area, as having devour will be enough. Now, discipline, we have ours at tier 10 for a 1 minute 1 second cooldown via threatening grenades. The friendlings are great for clearing out or damaging enemies when you need that extra level of damage quickly before going in. Although, 
I think the best play here would be to actually use cold stop grenades to freeze targets where they are, which then allows us to close the gap much more faster. This is of course all down to the player preferences, but next time I will do that as well. So having the following mods now will help support the rest of the kit as followed. Impact induction times 1 for a 12% grenade buff. Momentum transfer times 1 for a 12% mini buff. Bolstering detonation for a 12% class ability buff. Outreach for a 12% mini buff. And distribution for a 4% all ability buff will be suitable for the build. Additional mods, we then have the following. Connect Siphon will create orbs of power via Connect Weapons. Charge up times 1 for a plus 1 in armor stacks we carry. Lucan Blade for increased sword recharge energy. Kinetic and Solar Weapon Surge times 1 for a 10% Solar and Connect Weapon buff. And then lastly, Heavy Finder, Reserves and Scavenger Armor mods are highly recommended for the heavy weapon and secondary weapon we are using. As we have covered our exotic secondary, I would then advise you to pick a super weapon for the build. These are all optional, but do hold some benefits towards the build. In primary, we have the Blast Furnace with Kinetic Tremors and Rapid Hit. A highly recommended Kinetic Primary to have because of its perk combos. This weapon is amazing to be used in both PvE and PvP environments. Uh, pretty much anyone can get this, even as a free to play player. So if you're looking for a good legendary pulse rifle, make sure you do Onslaught as this one is 100% worth it. The Heavy, we have the Unwavering Duty Machine Gun with Incandescent and Offhand Strike. This is always a good pairing to use when using Dawn Chorus or any solar build, as the fast firing nature and the ability to apply Scorch makes it lethal against grouped up enemies. However, this can only be gotten via Trials, which not everyone will be happy to do, plus there's not much solar machine guns to pick if you can't get the following. So in this case, if you can't get the following, just pick any other machine gun if you're liking until then. It's not like the build really needs it, but it's handy. Using swords in GMs have always been 50-50 for me, as you can't just use any general sword to achieve your goals, nor can you guarantee a chance of you landing your hits without being one-shotted in the process. For me, these types of builds are fun to play around with, and good experience for those who want to push themselves even more, rather than playing it safe all the time. Now as shown, I thought this was going to be a disaster with how aggressive fallen enemies tend to be. The key to making this build work is to always have Prismatic on and active before engaging anyone. You are getting a damage reduction while using the 2 in hand, and it makes engaging up close and personal a tad more safe in the long run. On top of that, having Devour, Tier 10 Resilience, and Faster Protection is a must for such hard content in mind. But just these alone will not only make the journey worth it, but the sheer aggressiveness that comes out of it is actually quite exciting when you play around with it more and more. Applying Dawn Chorus with our sword will make it so that applying Scorch will always end up igniting the target for huge damage. And to be fair, you can easily take on 1 to 2 overloads or elite enemies of your own pretty well, as long as you are using and making full use of that heavy attack constantly. Even better, using this with Song of Flame as well, as you can get a damage reduction and damage increase while attacking a singular enemy. It's quite crazy what you can do with just a sword in hand in something like GMs. So should you ever try this, I recommend you try and get the following role I have, or better off try and get a version that has range to it, as that will allow you to get the jump onto most enemies. Once that's done, all you need to do is practice and just play aggressive with the build. You will never succeed if you don't take risk. So enjoy the build, have fun, and learn from your experience. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared, then please leave a comment below. Well, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos, then leave a like and a sub while you're here. A dim link for the build is located below in the pinned section, and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.